This recording was made as a part of the Oral History Project by St. Joseph's College Honors Program students in spring 2017 semester. It was recorded on April 11, 2017 at 3.30 p.m. in the Sister of St. Joseph's Convent located at 232 Clinton Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. The interviewers are Rebecca Bowman and Alondra Villanueva. The interviewee is Sister, Sister Margaret Buckley. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, this is about like your personal relations and like your memories from St. Joseph's. Um, how would you describe like the most important moment for you during your time at St. Joseph's? <clears throat> I know you gave us that question in advance, but I found it really very hard to answer because, you know, <clears throat> I was a student here and then I was a faculty member here and then I was the academic dean. So... It's, it's hard to pick out one important moment. You know, uh, my, my uh, years as a student were challenging, interesting. I had some very fine teachers, and I made friends. I made friends here that are still my friends today, 60 years later. And even though they're all over the country, uh, we still, when we meet and start talking, I always think it's like we're resuming a conversation that, that has been going on because the, I think the, um, our experience as students was so, um, had such a strong impact on us that it has last, it created a bond and it has lasted. I sometimes wonder if the experience students have today is quite as strong because our lives in those days were somewhat simpler. You have so many, so much more going on in your life, so much stimulation, you know, that I'm not sure college, college was our whole life when we were here. That was it, you know. Uh, when I was a faculty member here, after I graduated from college, I was a, a um, high school English teacher in a public high school in New York City before I went in the convent. When, uh, then when I came here to teach, um, I was in the secondary education or adolescence education department, and that was also a very challenging and interesting job with many important moments, many important moments. And then <clears throat> uh, at that time, Sister Mary Florence was the dean, and I became the associate the assistant dean, the associate dean, and then eventually she became the academic vice president. I became the dean. So the dean, in, in my life as a dean, which I was for like 20 something years, um, there were many big important moments too, uh, working with faculty. And um, I guess when I was a faculty member, I liked working with students. When I was the dean, I liked working with faculty and librarians and all kinds of other people, staff, administrators, and those were very happy years. Those were very happy years. So the other question that we have is also related to the past, to your past in St. Joseph's, and it is that um, what would you say was the most important change or changes that has or have been made to, the, to St. Joseph's College during your time here? And <coughs> Well, as you can imagine, I've, I've been through a lot of changes. <clears throat> Not long after I, I attended as a student St. Joseph's College for Women. And, um, but shortly after, I came here as a faculty member in 1969, and shortly, the year after I came, we went co-ed. So <clears throat> that was a kind of controversial step at the time. But... Um, and, but it has proved, I think, to be a good thing. Would you agree? Yes. <laughs> uh, and I've had some great male students, as well as female students. And, and then, of course, uh, developing the campus on Long Island was a, a very big change, you know, which expanded our horizons, increased our, increased our population. Uh, we grew considerably, and um, so 
it's, it's, it's in many ways a different school, uh, but I think in, in, in many ways it retained certain basic qualities. I think being, you know, value-oriented, student-centered, and um, I think I think it's, uh, and we hope that will, as we continue to grow, I hope that will continue. <laughs> um, I know it's hard for you to like um, pick one like favorite moment, but like out of every other thing, is there one thing that you remember as like your favorite memory of like St. Joseph's? <laughs> My favorite memory. Really, I mean, I thought about that because you did ask the question. I thought about it. It's, it's, ver it's very hard for me to pick out one thing. <clears throat> um, I, I, I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> That's fine. There is no one specific. Mm -hmm. So then, since you, we were talking about changes that has been made to St. Joseph's, um, we want to talk about the ACES program and how, what inspired the founding of the program and how did this affect promoting diversity on campus and the student admission process, like how that was affected by it. Now, are you, you're, are you, were you in the ACES program? Yeah. <clears throat> so you, you know it from the inside. <clears throat> but um, my, this is my recollection, a faculty member Kenneth Bauzon in political science uh, had done some research on the demographics of New York City. And he came to a meeting and he showed us the immigrant populations uh, which were coming in, especially to Brooklyn and Queens, well, to all the boroughs. <clears throat> and um, it seemed out of that discussion came the idea that this was a population that St. Joseph's could really serve very well because of our small size, personal attention to students, and um, welcoming atmosphere, wel welcoming climate. So <clears throat> the next thing we did was we, we um, involved a group of our alumni who were principals and superintendents in the public school system. And they had a lot of real current experience with immigrant students. And um, <clears throat> they were very positive about doing this kind of a program. One of them, as a matter of fact, Mary Butts is the one who created that name, Ace, ACES, um, which, is, which stands for Academic Center for now I'm, I don't even know myself when I'm not okay. Well, excellence. Mm. Students? I can't, I, can't, I can't remember, isn't that terrible? Um, but she, she, it was very important to us that this not appear as a remedial program mm -hmm. because it was not directed toward um, marginal students. It was directed to good students who needed additional help in, in the English language in order to function at their full potential. So um, maybe it was Academic Center for Enrichment Services. I think that's it, Academic Center for Enrichment Services. So it was enrichment, not remediation. <clears throat> so. Then the whole year went into planning it, and we hired the first director, whose name was Sidel Brooks, before your time. Um, and she was a very talented woman who had a lot of experience in another local college with ESL programs. And um, she really created it from scratch, uh, developed courses, and the whole structure of the program. And then 
in it. I think by the end of the first year, she brought in someone she'd worked with before, Mick Larson. You, you know Mick, right? And, and Mick is also, they shared the same philosophy of how to work with students. Um, and I think that they have, now, now Mick has moved to a new job, and now Kate Mayen is the director. But she also has been in the program for a long time. And I know that she shares the same philosophy. And um, my office in secondary education used to be right opposite the ACES Center. So I often, I became very friendly with them all. And I used to be so impressed when I would walk in and see, like especially on Friday, Friday, which is sort of a light day on campus, not in ACES, because, because students, I guess, didn't have a lot of classes. They would come for individual one-on-one -on -one work. And I think if you're trying to improve someone's writing, one-on-one -on -one is really the best way to do it. And they also hired a number of tutors to work with them. And Mick was very fussy about the tutor. He wanted the right kind, the right kind of people you know, who would uh, have respect for the students, be reliable, work hard, and um, I think he succeeded. I should also mention that um, the husband of a, an alumna, um, I wrote down her name, Mary Grace Calhoun, done, gave a, a big donation. And that's why the center is named, her picture is hanging in there someplace, and her name is over the door, Mary Grace Calhoun Dunn. Um, so the center is named after her. But I think other, other donors have contributed. I know S Steve Summers, an another, another, he's a graduate himself, and he has uh, he's contributed to scholarships for, for ACES students. Of course, it's kind of easy to uh, sell the program to benefactors because it's so clear that it's a wonderful program and really serves, serves a real need. And I think the students, the students over the years have generally appreciated it. Some of them have gone on to spectacular achievements, medical school, graduate school, all kinds of wonderful things because the, now they work very hard, I think. My observation of them in there is that they work very hard, right? You know, they work very hard. The tutors work hard, but the students work hard too. And they therefore grow greatly over the whole, because I think the course, the course used to just be one year courses. And then I think they've extended it now into sophomore year. And then the tutoring, I think, is always available to you for four years. And so anyway, I'm a big fan of the ACES program. OK. Um, has it become a challenge to maintain the Catholic values of the college? <clears throat> Well, I guess it's a challenge, yes. Uh, it's, uh, I think we have many very dedicated faculty members and administrators. Um, I mean, it, it, the sisters, there are fewer of us all the time, and that made it a little more visible, I guess, the Catholic values. But um, I think that other... Many people have uh, uh, accept and practice the the same values of uh, you know we say inclusive love um, and um, so I think I I've, and it is a challenge for not only St Joseph's but all kinds of schools where the number of quote religious is declining to how, to how to carry on what we call the charism, you know, the values of the congregation. But so we, 
we try to talk about it a little bit. Not really a lot, I mean, I think, but I think they're somewhat embedded in the philosophy, the mission of the college. So just related to that, how do you feel about the diminishing numbers of nuns in the whole world, but especially in Joseph? Well, I don't feel happy about it, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fact. So, I mean, you have to, there it is. So you have to, that's why I say the, uh, the challenge is to find ways to um, have, have faculty and administrators and staff um, understand the charism and adopt it and try to implement it in their, in their own work. Which I, I mean, so far I would say that that's, that's happened because I, I do think the values of the Sister Senators have become, the, have underlined, underlined the values, underlined the values of the college. Okay, um, this question is based off of student interests. Um, what kinds of changes or improvements do you think St. Joseph's needs to meet the growing student population today? and to meet the students' needs, um, for example, like new buildings, um, facilities, and programs? <clears throat> well, um, here in Brooklyn, we, um, here in Brooklyn, we're, we, we built this Hill Center, which fortunately, um, I think it was a great asset. It's such a beautiful building, and um, even if you're not an athlete, I think, you, uh, you, you enjoy having the building. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. Well, I have to say, we have, with limited space, yeah. you know, in yeah. the city, space is so, it's such a uh, priority. And with limited space, we're, we're kind of creative, I think, and flexible. Like the nursing program, which is only in its, is this its second it's year? Second. Third, second or third year, second year, second year mm -hmm. requires special facilities. Yeah. So they've Been taken the library. Mm -hmm. they, they've taken computer labs. And so I hope they don't take all those books, Lauren. And, um, some of them have disappeared, I noticed. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so they've, it, in other words, we've made creative use of limited space to meet new needs because it was absolute need to create these mm -hmm. specialized facilities for nursing. Because although the nursing program is new, we want it to be first rate. So in order to do that, you have to have special. Uh, now there's also an example of a new program that was introduced in response to student mm -hmm. requests, I think. It, it appeared to be a very popular field. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we, uh, we created it. It required hiring additional faculty as well as creating special space. But apparently, they tell me from this, they just had an admitted students' day, and the number of students coming for nursing, I think it was the largest of any department. So that that shows that it's mm -hmm. the right the right program at the right time, you know. Um, We've added a number of other programs over the years, I think, and I guess we have to always be open, listening, listening to what the students want and um, what is needed, what is needed. However, I also um, believe in, you know, keeping our traditional programs strong. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't want to like spread out so much that it weakens the, uh, the traditional programs, um, which, which have always been strong, I think. Mm -hmm. And we, we, had, we always had a strong academic reputation. Okay. Building, building program. Okay, so now we're going back to the past, to when the school became co-ed. So what kinds of changes did the college going when it was going through that process bring brought to St. Joseph's? And how did the faculty also become more diverse when the college went colder? 
Uh, I remember, I think for a period of, at, at first, for a short period of time, we created a, po a <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a position called Dean of Men. Mm -hmm. We had a d dean like Sherry uh, at Student Services, that, that area. But they created, they thought they needed a separate dean for men. Well, that position didn't last too long. <laughs> I, in other words, they decided it wasn't necessary to have a separate, um, a separate person for that job. Um, uh, we, we, um, a funny one. This is a funny story. Um, it, you, when when I was a student here, modern dance was a required course because. Uh, Someone who, uh, the president or someone at that time, believed that it helped make the students graceful, which is probably true. <laughs> and however, it was required mm -hmm. when the men came, we had to stop making it required. <laughs> I think that was the only curricular change we made, though. I think. I don't, I'm trying to think of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know whether it affected the diversity of the faculty. I mean, even though in the earlier days we had many sister faculty, we always had a layman women, laymen and lay women and priest faculty. So I don't know that we suddenly began to hire more men. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know. I don't think so. And we always sort of try to hold, hire the best person for the job, the most qualified person for the job. Um, but I guess, in fact, proportionally, the number of men faculty increased, I think. It did. I think it did. If I look back over the years, as the sis number of sisters shrunk and we hired new faculty, for all of, uh, not all of whom were men, but... So, um, the, diversity, the diversity of the, fa of the student body, though, I think... Um, has increased over the years, but I think that that's not so much a matter of policy as it is of the changing demographics of New York City. You know, um, I remember when I was the dean, I was I was always interested in getting Asian American students because you know they have a reputation mm -hmm. for being for being I don't know for being good students. I'm not sure they all are, but they have that yeah. stere it's a stereotype. Stereotype, yes. Anyway, so occasionally, as, oh, I don't think we had any at that point. Occasionally someone would come for a tour or something like that, and I would encourage, and, and, and the student would say quite appropriately, how many Asian American students do you have here? Mm -hmm. And I had to say, well, right now we don't have <laughs> any, but you be. You be the first one. <laughs> and she didn't come, neither to say anything. But all of a sudden, after all my efforts, which didn't do anything, anything, all of a sudden, all these Asian American students arrived just because they're all in Brooklyn, and the number in Brooklyn and Queens increased so much. So I think we have an interesting diversity of students at present. You know, really. So do you think that we I don't think so. You know, if you saw in the archives, you saw old pictures of an awning that that was over the entrance to Tui Hall, which wasn't called Tui Hall at that point, but the walkway from the sidewalk to the door was a green um, awning that said St. Joseph's College for Women. So one day they have a ceremony, took it down, and I think they cut up pieces and gave them away as souvenirs. <laughs> um, so, what 
what was your reasoning for coming back to St. Joseph's and becoming a teacher? Or like starting your career here? Oh, I, I, I mean, in those days in the convent, you went where you were sent. So they sent me here, that's why I get. But I think the reason they sent me was that, um, the reason they sent me was that I had been a public school teacher. And the other person in the secondary education, Sister John Raymond, had, had be, become a member of the general government of the Sisters of St. Joseph. So she had another job, so she couldn't do everything that she had been doing here. So she needed help. So they thought, since I had been a public school teacher, a big part of the job, you know, is supervising student teachers, going out to the schools and visiting the students when they're student teaching. And so she, they thought that I would find that I would find that easy to do because I had had experience in the public schools. Really, I wanted to be an English teacher, but I became an education teacher. <laughs> I, I learned, I learned, yeah, and it had many interesting things. Many, I, you know, I, I learned to love aspects of it. The students were, most, most of the students were wonderful. Uh, and, and it was, of course, that was interesting to, um, to go out and to see them. Do the, the, the final outcome of their studies was their student teaching. So it was interesting to see them. And almost all of them really do a very good job. Very good job. I also, we also um, imported, exported the secondary education program to the Long Island campus. It wasn't there from the beginning, but at some point we brought it out. And then for like eight years, I also uh, supervised student teachers out there. Um, that was a challenge to, to go to drive from Brooklyn, like to Riverhead, or some some place way out there, with which I was quite unfamiliar, um, uh, to supervise student teachers. However, it, it was interesting to see the difference between the urban and suburban schools. You know, that was an enriching experience for me. Okay, so. Since we are part of the honors program, we found it important and interesting that you you were the one who came up with the idea. Right? Yes. So we were just wondering how, like, why and how do you came up? With it? Well, um, I think I, you know, I I wanted to be sure that we were sufficiently challenging our best students. I, mean, I think we try to do uh, to reach all of our students, and I think we do a pretty good job. But I wanted to be sure that the bet we were sufficiently challenging, pushing our best students. So I thought something that would demand more of them um, would be worth trying, and um, so it's. It's, uh, it's had ups and downs, but I think it, it has, and it's gone through some evolution. And I think it's uh, Michael Burke, Dr. Yes. Burke, is now in charge of it. And he has done some new things, some creative things, um, which I think are, you know, you always have to, a program like this always have to evolve. Jane Beckwith has done travel abroad. As a matter of fact, oh, I should have mentioned that. I wouldn't say it's the highest point, but it was a high point. I went on two different trips with the honors pro travel abroad trips with the honors program students. Once to Paris, once to Paris and Nice, and once to Italy. So they were high points. Yeah, and they're and going back to Italy now, like this semester. Pardon? They are going back to Italy now this semester. Right. Are you? Go well, you're. No, you're I'm not going back to Italy. Yeah, maybe, maybe. It's because I went to the president's council and I said, um, "Can can we provide a subsidy? Because it would be 
uh, very difficult for them to pay the whole fee. So I think it was Sister Elizabeth at that time, who was the president, who said, yes, we, we should pay half, half the cost of the trip, which I think made it, made it more possible for students mm -hmm. to do it. You know. And how do you think that the honors program benefited us as students? Well, I think it pushes you maybe to do some things that you would not otherwise have done. You know, one, <clears throat> There are all kinds of different ways of getting honors credit, but in some of them, some of them, the honors program students are together, right? Together. So one of the things that makes an honors course an honors course is when you have the best and brightest together. In other words, the level, the level of discussion, the level of thinking should be higher, you know, um, and you know, most, our students, our honor students are not isolated all the time. In other words, I don't think they would want that. Um, but once in a while, it's good to have that experience, honors program experience, uh, with, with just the other honors. But I think some of Michael's creative courses there are just for honors program students, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, have you done one of those? Yeah, I have done two actually already. And what were they? So one was we actually like studied Boston, and we actually went to Boston like to see the history of it. And then it was the other one. It was with Professor Beckwith. It was actually starting art, so it's just like going back to history of something. It's the same thing that they are doing now, from like to going to Iran. It's just like to study its background and its goal and everything. Because mm -hmm. it's not like the trip is not like just to go and see the city, but actually like do some work and. You're not just a tourist. Yeah. No, it's an educational experience. But you have fun too, right? Fun. <laughs> and, and, and how about you? Have you done one of those special courses? Yes, since I'm a freshman, I did uh, the freshman experience, but honors like side. So that's when I like met the people, the honors people in my grade. Um, we we did with um, Jane Beckwith. We did the art and history of like storytelling of New York City, and then we did like an English component and like an art component with Professor Han as well. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So one more question about the honors program. Um, do you think that um, as of today, um, you have lived up to your expectations of the honors program? You mean, has the honors program lived up to it or yeah, like, you, like your expectations oh. that you must have? I, I, think, I think so. One of the features of the honors program that may not have affected you yet, but will at some point in the future, is that at the end, there is a public presentation of thesis or research or something. Even, now, you said accounting, right? So I think you don't, you don't do a thesis in accounting. But we've managed to find a way. Because I think um, one of the things a, a, a very good student, we want to challenge a very good student to be able to present clearly and effectively in a, in a public setting. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I think uh, they weren't all enthusiastic about doing that. But um, we, made, we made them do it. <laughs> and I think they're still doing it now. Yes. And it, in fact, they've extended it to other students now. Other, other departments are now having public presentations, right? Lastly, what do you wish for the future of St. Joe's? Well, mm -hmm. uh, well, I I hope it continues. I hope it continues. Um, I hope it continues in Brooklyn because I think this is Brooklyn is a special place. Um, that Brooklyn has certainly evolved a great deal since uh, since I. I started coming here. Um, and uh, I hope it grows. But I, I would like to see it grow a little bit.
but I wouldn't like to see it get so big that it loses the personal quality that I think is one of its greatest strengths. The relationship with, between uh, students and faculty, the close relationship among students, I think you don't always get that. And, uh, I interviewed a transfer student yesterday who's coming from an upstate um, state university, mm -hmm. university, and she is, I mean, that's basically the reason she's transferring. She, she felt kind of lost, and she wants a, her sister had gone here and liked it very much, so she already knew something about it. But she felt a different climate would be better for her. So I think we want, we want to hold on to that as we grow and change. Um, I guess I didn't, uh, there was a question in there about tuition, I, which I, I just as, I'm happy you didn't ask it, but, I, <laughs> but um, I, I wanted to say, I guess one of the things that has to keep on happening is that we have to keep up to date with technology, and, um, and which is one of the reasons why costs keep going up because technology is so expensive, you know. Um, but so uh, we're continuing. And unfortunately, what, what irritates me is that, you know, it, everything is obsolete in three years and you have to buy new one. Um, but um, I think up until now, we have managed to provide pretty good technology resources for our students and faculty too. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, that's one of the things that we're gonna have to continue to do as we not only grow, just to, just to continue to exist, you need to constantly improve your technology. Thank you very much. Thank you it was very nice to meet the two of you. Thank <laughs> you.